hey y'all, I just wanted to show you why I had the chance, uh, something we've been working on here. And I haven't made any footage of it because Ryan's been out here helping me and I've been trying to help him help me. So anyway, he's on his way out here today to put it back together, but I'm gonna show you what we got taken apart. So, Rosie, and you guys can see, just from looking in the video here, Rosie is in pieces. Rosie's needed help for a long time. Rosie's had leaking cylinders, weeping cylinders. This stick cylinder, or the bucket cylinder, I mean, I'm sorry, the bucket cylinder, it's been seeping for years, years. But it was never too bad. It was just enough that kind of the back of the bucket just stayed wet. Didn't really worry about it. The boom cylinder started leaking about a year ago and they've got progressively worse all year to the point that now when I set the boom down, it was just a steady stream of oil just running out. So they were getting pretty bad and getting pretty messy. And honestly, this last fall, I was so busy with the excavator, I didn't want to shut down to have to make this repair. Long story short, we've been shut down now for almost a week. And I figured that's what would happen. So I didn't want to get shut down during the dry season. Just as soon as it started raining, then we started looking at our options and say, hey, you know what, the excavator needs to come home, it needs to be sidelined for a little bit, and let's get it done. Well, it's been home now for, I don't know, several weeks. Um, so that to me finally says, okay, it's, it's time to do it. Um, and we you know, had the extra little bit of surplus, I guess, if you will, in our budget. So I said, okay, let's do it. Let's, let's get it done. Let's reinvest the money. It needs to be done. I mean, I can keep feeding hydraulic oil and I can keep leaving puddles on the ground, but that's just not good practice. So anyway, Ryan came out um, last Sunday. Today is now Saturday, so not quite a week ago, uh, and helped me pull it apart. And I just wanted to kind of show you guys some of the things that we did. Um, thankfully, it came apart really, really well, really easily. And again, like I always tell you guys, on working on machines like this, it looks like it would just be so big and so difficult, but you know, having the right tools, the, the biggest thing that Ryan's brought out here that's just been a lifesaver, the biggest reason I needed him as a professional mechanic, he's got better tools than me, more tools than me, but we didn't have any specialized tools really. I mean, his, his crane on his truck was the biggest, best thing to have. And that was really just because he's able to back his truck right in here you know, beside the machine basically, and we can boom the crane out. Otherwise, we could have done all this with the tractor. It would have been a little bit more troublesome, a little bit more of a pain in the butt, but we could have done all of this with the tractor and the front end loader. A lot of guys do it, you know, with a backhoe or something, just as an auxiliary machine. Uh, so the first thing we started on was the big, the big boom cylinders here. Obviously, we figured these would be the biggest, hardest. The pin up there, I keep my machine greased. Some people don't, but I do. And so that pin actually drove out pretty easy. We had to beat on a little bit to get it moving. Um, but once we got it moving, it moved really, really well. So we pushed the pin the other way first, laid this cylinder down, the closer one, then drove the pin back through and laid the other cylinder down. Once we got it, so once we got it, we probably spent 20 minutes to 30 minutes hammering on it the first time to go the other way. A couple minutes, drive it back the other way. That was it. Um, and be careful when you're hammering on it too. Make sure you have a punch that's hitting in the center of the pin because if you hit the edges, you're gonna mushroom that pin and then you're not gonna be able to get it to actually drive through because it's gonna be mushroomed out. So make sure you're hitting in the middle of the pin. Um, we got those two laid down and then we pulled them out. To pull them out, we actually reached the tractor. We set the bucket down here just enough that I could get between the bucket and Wilbur's tire. And Ryan has a truck parked over here, but we were able to get the tractor in and reach a chain over the top of the bucket and come in and pull uh, the driver side cylinder. And then we repositioned a little bit, brought the chain over this side of the bucket here and came in and pulled uh, the, the boom side, or I guess you could say the passenger side cylinder out. So and they, you know, they pull out pretty easy. You want to go nice and gentle. So we were using the tractor with a chain, you know, one, one, just real low, just easing it out, had the bucket sitting underneath on the ground to catch as much oil as we could. Oil still goes pretty much everywhere, but we caught as much as we could. 
Um, and then once we got the cylinder pulled out, or the, the rod, I should say, once we got it out to where it was about to fall, then we tied off to the rod with Ryan's crane so that when I did pull it out with the tractor, it didn't fall and fall in the dirt. Probably wouldn't really matter. The cylinders are super durable and the seals were already shot. So, you know, if you gouge a seal on a rock, oh well, the biggest thing is you just don't want to gouge the rod itself. Uh, drop it and damage it. So we got those two pulled out and laid down, set over on the trailer here which I set them on the trailer because I was thinking they were going to be bigger and heavier, but honestly, I went to pick them up in the bed of my truck. <laughs> you know, I didn't need the trailer. They were the longest ones, maybe five feet. Uh, so then we switched over and we worked on the bucket cylinder here. And similarly easy, the one trick on the bucket cylinder was, you see we have it blocked up. So had we tried to pull it out at the, downward the natural downward angle of it, um, you would have got hung up here in the, in the H brace. So we actually propped it up a little bit so we could pull the rod out over the top of the H brace. Uh, but same thing, I mean, the pin drove pretty easy. This pin has got a little bit of wear on it. You guys probably can't really even see it. Well, maybe you can, you can see a little bit of wear pattern there. Um, but it's not so bad that I'm gonna put the money into replacing it. This machine is just not a all day, everyday machine. That pin's got a lot of life left into the bushings and everything are still pretty tight, really. So I get slop. If I was to replace any pin, it'd be down here on the bucket. I get a little bit of bucket slop, but the top of the H frame doesn't really move much. Um, we did get, we had some differential sticking, so the seals on the back side of the buckets, uh, bucket cylinder, the seals inside were actually really good to the point that we had to disconnect that hydraulic line up top to break the vacuum and actually pull it out. We got to where I was pulling with the tractor and it was, it was, uh, yeah, differentially stuck. So anyway, that's the long and short of it. Um, it took us right at three hours, I think, to lay down all three. Not even three hours. I think Ryan got here about 8.15, 8.30, something like that. And we were we were done and cleaning up by 11.15. I think we were cleaned up by 11.15. So that went really, really well. It made me really happy. Um, we took the rods to a hydraulic shop to, be, to have the big nut on the bottom broke and have them resealed. Now, I could have driven them down to a seal place myself in Houston. I would have, you know, and, and matched up the seals myself. I would have still had to have somebody help me break the nut. And so it just made sense to just take it to a shop. The shop charged me $1,200 to rebuild all three rods. Seems crazy, right? $1,200, that's expensive. I called the dealer to get the seal kits. Just for the three seal kits from the dealer, $1,000. So to get the seals, and the rods all done, labor and materials for 12 for an extra 200 bucks. That's worth it. And I didn't have to spend a whole day driving around Houston trying to match it up. And I didn't have to try to kill myself breaking these massive nuts. So this is this is the nut on the bottom of the rod that is so big I can barely get my hand right. This thing's the size of a softball. It's huge. So yeah, they got those broke. You can see they greased. They greased the new seals that they put on. That's really important when you're going to do this yourself. Make sure you grease the seals when you put it back together or oil the seals. If you put in a dry rubber seal and a dry cylinder, you might scorch it and tear it on the way in and then you did all that work for nothing. So make sure you grease or oil your seals before you push it back together. They've already done it. They wrapped them nice in plastic bags, keep them clean. So that's done. We're looking at, you know, optimistically, I want to say... And I'll try to remember to update you guys when it's done. We'll fire Rosie up and get you some action shots that are working and not leaking. That's the hope. Um, but yeah, I'm in it right now. 350 bucks to Ryan for to help take it apart. Um, 1200 at the shop, so 1550. All you know, Lord willing, today it's about another 300 bucks to put it back together. So 1850. Let's just say less than 2,000 dollars. I don't know. <laughs> I can't even fathom what it would have cost if I would have sent this machine into a dealership or a you know a true shop I would have shit I would have had a, a thousand in trucking alone to take it to the closest shop so plus a thousand in the seal kits if I went through the dealer so you know I wanted to share this again just as it's one of those things I've been needing to get this done for a long time and I've thought about it and I've gone back and forth and back and forth you know what's What's the best way to do it? I mean, several times I just about called the dealer and said, yeah, give me the seal kit. And we were do we were thinking that because Ryan said, hey, we can come pull them out one day, rebuild them right there on site, stuff them right back in. But the problem was breaking that big nut. So we talked about doing that. 
and, you know, and, and he had no idea what was on the inside. I had no idea what was on the inside. Some of them have a sort of low torque setup where it's got bolts and, and flanges, but this one was definitely not. So we basically said, well, the odds are good that we're going to pull it out of there and we're going to find a high torque nut on there. And if that's the case, we're going to have to go to a shop anyway, or we're going to do something crazy that we don't want to do here on site and potentially hurt ourselves. Take it to a shop. They've already got the press and the, the nut breaker and everything already set up. It just makes sense. Um, so yeah, to say that you know all in is gonna be 2,000 bucks, it's not that big of a deal. And when this machine works, if I work all day long, I make $2,000 in two days. So it's it was necessary, it didn't have to be done, uh, but it's a good routine maintenance that needed to be done. It's been needed to be done for a long time. And it's like anything else, I kept putting it off and putting it off. But now that this machine is becoming more a part of my income, and I'm actually hiring it out on jobs, I need to take better care of it. I can't just have it sitting around my place dripping oil all over the ground. And, you know, it's not just my mess anymore. When it goes on other people's property, it becomes their mess and it becomes my reputation. So it needs to be done regardless. It needs to be done just for proper maintenance, but it also needs to be done so that I'm not making a mess. Anyway, Ryan should be on his way out here today. I don't know if I'll get any footage of us actually tearing it apart or putting it back together. Um, but I'll certainly try to get a little video at the end, show you guys Rosie's back up and running, and I'll give you a summary in the end what the total cost was.